out of the funds. If you're paying for this yourself, then how it sh it shows how serious you are and you're willing to obviously risk your own funds for this. Because the reason I bring this up, because one of the myths, myths out there, especially in the Middle Eastern, obviously, communities or um, countries, Iran, um, even Turkey, other places in the region is that, hey, I've heard that if you don't have funds, right, or scholarship or some sort of a funding, you're going to get denied. So only people with the funding would get, you know, approved, which, you know, we always share actually data according to actual data of the international students who are in the U.S. right now. I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, over 70% of them were actually self-funded. And then it breaks down into scholarships, government funding, and, and so on and so forth. And so we always try to share that. But what you touched on was a great golden point because that actually makes sense. What you're saying is that so the officer looks at it and says, hey, this person is willing to risk their own money, you know, have, you know, have gathered the funds or spending their own funds to actually do this. Now, the next step, as you said, the presentation, and if that person is a serious student and how and so why all the whys, rather than maybe thinking, you know, a, you know, minute one that what's well, not even, you know, his or her own money. So maybe she doesn't care. Maybe he doesn't care. Yeah, absolutely. That's that that is a valuable point. I mean, it just it, it just to give your 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 audience, you know, if somebody's asking you to do business with them, somebody's asking you to, you know, go to their, you know, get involved in something. If you see that they're doing it, they're using their product, they're they've invested in that business, if they it goes a long way to showing they believe in it too. So if the student is willing to invest in themselves by risking whatever money they put together, and in many of these countries, yeah. you know, education in the US, no matter what you do, is an expensive proposition. All right. So it's not it, it's not an easy thing to afford. So if they're willing to risk their own money, or even in money cases, not just their own money, but their family's money to do an education, that's taken very seriously. And you know, it is a positive. It's definitely a positive because the person is much less likely to just you know take not take their studies seriously. So absolutely, Ashton, I agree. If they're using their own money. And if they can explain why it's, you know, a big commitment by their family to send them to college overseas and they're using their family's money, it's a big, it's a big factor that, you know, that that's going on now. Scholarships and so on, in-state tuition, out-of-state tuition, all those things. I mean, keep in mind, students can work, not their first year, but they can work eventually part-time and help fund their education too. And why would I, as a consul officer, think here's a student who, if they need to, is going to go get a part time job so they can help pay for their education? Because I find them credible, because I think this person's serious. OK, because if they're there because they want to get an education, they're going to go get a part time job if they need to on campus so that they can help pay for their education. The system in the United States, as you well know, for people who are serious and work hard, will always find a way most of the time to accommodate. It's when you get into the problem of I, I, I don't want to do work hard and I don't want to you know, stick to the laws that are in place for the student visa that then you get into some difficulties. So self-financing students, people who are paying their way through school are absolutely some of the most credible people you deal with in the U.S., internationally or, uh, you know, at all. So it's, yeah. it's an impressive, positive thing.